Well, everyone checking in on the Canadian MJ sector. So didn't get a video out last night, but our game plan was back to the good old days for the Bulls in terms of if we close up near the high of the day, we make bullish entries, if not already in them, into the end of the day. And then we look for the gap up open. So the one thing we can say about these market makers is they sure are consistent with their game plan and it makes it really easy. I have never had so much success so consistently with overnight quick swing trades, meaning just getting in at the end of one day and and exiting at the start of the other. And it really gives a lot of flexibility in what you can do. So for example, I chose ACB yesterday and we, all of us were loading up in different positions. I took a big position in ACB at the end of the day, the last 20 minutes or so, when I saw that the bull momentum was there and we were at the high of the day. And then when we had the gap up open, you know, you can sell half of it first thing, lock in that profit, and then look to hold half and see if the bulls can get any kind of follow through. So that was what I did today and ended up taking profit. And again, I cannot stress the importance enough of having a game plan as you head into every day, looking at, you know, the charts every night and establishing that game plan. So here just on Facebook posted with the significant bounce in Canadian MJ, there will be a short entry opportunity before the end of the week. And it happened today while we look for a daily equilibrium to form starting to scout in that direction after I sell my ACB from the bull momentum close yesterday. So as soon as I exited my ACB position, which I did fairly quickly in this morning, I could see that the bulls didn't really have a ton of follow through at that point. When we were at the high of the day, we were up about eight or 9%. And I did not foresee that we were going to have another 12% day. Keep in mind, you know, these market makers are, are really just showing their hands so clearly where look at the bounce that we saw. We saw a 40% bounce in Canadian MJ over two days, and then we have about an 8% gap up open. If you're gonna give me a 40% bounce and then an 8% gap up open, that starts to speak of greed, and you need to lock in some profit on that move and look for the equilibrium pattern on the daily. We knew we were going to form a lower high on the daily. It's just a question of when, and it ended up being today. So what we did was shift from bullish. We all sold our positions this morning, and then we entered bearish positions once the morning slowed down. And really what it was, it was the SPY correlation again. I saw SPY hitting new highs of the day, and I saw Canadian MJ not following. So I said, okay, correlation's breaking a little bit. It's no longer favoring the bulls. Even though the market bounce is still going on, Canadian MJ bulls are tiring out. And that's because the market makers gave us that 8% gap up open. So we entered bearish positions and we did a top fishing play. And a top fishing play is when you uh, make an exit or I should say make an entry. I entered near the high of the day on actually traded MJX. Sorry, I'm all over the place here. MJX. So I shorted MJX with twice a normal position for me. I went heavy because it was such a clear top fishing play. When I saw the bulls start to tire out, I said, okay, I'm going to make an entry here at 33.50. This candlestick is where I entered. And then I entered more on this second candlestick. And why I entered so much bigger than usual, double what I normally would, was because of the, the risk. I am going to exit this trade and take a small loss if we set a new high of the day. It's a very simple guideline. I don't have to have any emotion involved, involved in the trade. It's a very simple level. I either set my stop loss or I'm sitting here staring at the screen with my sell order filled out. And I say, okay, as soon as a new high of the day is hit, I exit the MJX short. And it was not hit and it ended up being a really nice play. I took half of my profit on this initial dump down. I took profit at 32.71 and I'm currently swinging half a position because we ended with a little bit of bear momentum, enough bear momentum that I'm going to watch to see how it plays out tomorrow. And I'm also so comfortably in the green in that position that you know, there's really little risk holding it overnight would just leave a little profit on the table. Uh, worst case scenario. So that's where we stand as we head into tomorrow. This daily chart gave us a lower high pattern. I'm going to go into the individual analysis of each name here, pointing out some key levels, but got to give a big shout out to the chat room. And I know there's a lot of people waiting to get into the chat room. Uh, we let in a few people a day. We got over 2000 people on the wait list. So thank you for your patience. But this is, you know, this is the kind of day we don't show emotion as traders. We let the par party parrots do the talking for us. And this is how you know it's been a good day when we play literally both directions and making significant gains. We had a lot of people making their first options trades today. And that's certainly not something you want to do out on your own. Really nice to have a team holding your hand and helping you out just in terms of, you know, what strikes to be looking at or what the options mean. Uh, but really opens up your ability to trade in both directions once you do get comfortable with options. So doing so with a very small amount of money or paper trading is absolutely recommended. Otherwise, you will absolutely lose money. I promise you, I was charting and trading for over four years when I started trading options and I lost. I did not do, you know, every, every mistake that I tell people don't do this and do this are mistakes that I have all made on my own. And I, without, you know, putting in money in education and without, 
uh, paper trading, I said, okay, I'm doing really well trading stocks. These charts are a breeze for me, and I'm going to try some options now. And because it's such a different animal than trading common shares, I did end up losing a few thousand dollars because I thought that it would be an easier transition. So again, just a, a heads up, it's worth practicing, it's worth learning, but be very cautious while you do so. So MJX, our new resistance, all resistances are going to be the high of the day very clearly. That level is up at 33.93. And the key support is the low of the day. The bears want to see a break of the low of today early tomorrow to show continuation to the downside. We're going to be looking for daily equilibrium patterns, as my Facebook message pointed out, where we see our lower high set. We're going to pull back and look to form a higher low and then a lower high and watch this equilibrium break in a clear tightening pattern that should break sometime early next week. I'm not anticipating a break within the next two days. I'm anticipating trading opportunity and volatility to slow down a little bit over the next two days. So checking in on WEED, here it is on the daily. Again, solid bounce, but we knew a lower high was going to form because to break the lower high pattern, we would have had to break 35.63, which is it's not realistic at this point. So resistance, 31.35. Support is the low of the day down at 26.66. And if that breaks, we'll have to be patient while we look for a higher low on the daily to form. APH on the daily time frame is a lot weaker in terms of the lack of follow through. And it actually looks like we're missing a day here. So yeah, no, that's right. So ACB def or APH, I should say, uh, less of a bounce in terms of the amount of days that it took place. Resistance is 89.83. Support is 87.46. And then again, we're looking for the higher low pattern to form. Big time upper wick of profit taking on the daily. ACB has had great volatility today. And on this entire dump and bounce, the gains have been huge in both directions. So again, we had multiple opportunities to play, just looking at today, the initial dump that we had, look at this bounce. We dumped to $11 and then we bounced to $11.97. So essentially a 9% bounce in just an hour or two after a big time pullback and dump. So we sold on the gap up open to lock in profit. A lot of us went bearish. Some people locked in their bear profit and then some people played this bounce again. There's, you know, if you have an opportunity of 9%, you capture a third of that. You make a poor entry and a poor exit. You just made 3% in an hour. That's a big time trade. If you do that consistently, I promise you that your accounts will grow very quickly, especially if you're compounding profits. So here on the daily time frame for ACB, we got our resistance of 1255. We've got our support down here at 1061 and we'll look for a higher low and psychological support levels if we break 1061. That is the key support to be watching tomorrow morning to see if the bulls can hold on or not. And right now, momentum is shifting and saying that it is likely that we see a bear break. MJN, we did break a lower high here on MJN. So breaking eight or 984 was a good sign, and we will look for the bulls to try and change this trend, but it is going to likely follow along with the sector as a whole. So we've got our resistance at 1050. Our support is down at 866 and then eight psychological if we do break that level. So that's where we stand with the Canadian MJ sector. Again, as the equilibrium pattern tightens up, so does volume and volatility, and which that means trading opportunity tightens up as well. So I've been very aggressively trading the past few days, and I will slow back as the action slows back as well. The last thing I'm going to do is over trade in a tightening range and give back some profits. And from here, we will be looking for the bears to follow through a little bit. We'll be looking for a higher low on the daily and then a really nice clear break of the daily equilibrium pattern uh, mid next week, I would say. So we'll keep checking in. I appreciate you watching and I hope you have a good rest of your night.